Hey sis, you finished moving yet? Mom and dad are with me and we're planning to head back soon. Hope you're out of there by the time we return. I'm leaving now. Just a few unpacking left. What, you're still there? Come on, hurry up. We deliberately went on this trip, thinking you'd be gone before we came back. It's been three days already. Are you stalling for some souvenir or something before you finally leave? No, I'm not. Frankly, I don't even consider myself a part of this family anymore. It's quite apparent how you feel about me, planning a trip precisely when I'm moving out. You blame us? We know exactly the kind of person you are. If we were there helping you move, you'd expect us to do everything, wouldn't you? Sorry, but we'd rather not be associated with a criminal. We don't accept criminals as part of our family. Seriously? You're still harping on that? I've explained everything already. I just helped someone on the street and anyone in my situation would have done the same. Why won't any of you believe me? Oh, you're still trying to use that excuse. As if anyone would buy into such a far-fetched story. It's just too coincidental that while you were escorting that old lady, $10,000 mysteriously vanished from her purse. It's not a very convincing tale, if you ask me. If you're going to lie, at least come up with something more believable. It's the truth, Rosa. I didn't steal that money. There's no way I would rob an old lady. I was simply at the wrong place at the wrong time. She's overly suspicious of everyone because she was previously robbed. Naturally, she'd point fingers at a stranger who offered help. But none of you seem to care about what I say or defend me. Do you know how hurtful that is? I'm your family for crying out loud. The reason everyone, including the old lady, suspects you is because you are the one responsible. No one wants to defend a criminal, and frankly, at this point, no one believes a word you say. So why not just own up to your actions and tell the truth? Maybe if you apologize, we might consider forgiving you. How many times do I have to say it? I didn't do it. Why won't any of you believe me? This is beyond ridiculous. It's not about believing you, but rather your actions speak for themselves. Remember back in middle school when you were a delinquent, smoking and causing trouble? Or how you got rejected from college and never had the motivation to try again? Your history is filled with letting people down and being an utter failure. None of that has anything to do with what we're discussing right now. Instead of standing up for a family member in need, you choose to kick me out? That's not how a family should treat each other. I thought you'd always have my back. We've known each other our whole lives. It's high time you stop blaming others and start recognizing your own shortcomings. You're playing the victim card, saying we won't stand up for you. But perhaps you are so untrustworthy that even your own family doesn't want to defend you? I've had enough of this. I get it. Everyone seems determined to believe that I am some kind of criminal. Fine. I'll leave today and I want nothing to do with any of you from now on. Is that what you all want? Oh, really? That's quite all right with us. You know, if you just confessed and apologized, we would have considered letting you come back home. It's not too late to admit that you're a liar. People who label their family members as criminals aren't family to me, especially when there's no evidence to prove it. After today, I'm no longer part of this so-called family. You can let mom and dad know that too. They've hurt me the most. Oh, don't worry, I'll be sure to pass along your message. Honestly, it works out well for us since having a criminal in the family is not a good look. You know the neighbors would judge us. We don't need that kind of negativity in our lives. They probably would, given our nosy neighbors. I'm cutting ties with this toxic family, and I couldn't be happier about it. I don't want to be associated with people who care so much about what others think. Well, we don't want to be associated with you either. There's not one redeeming quality about you. While I'm pursuing my education, you're wasting your life playing video games. It's embarrassing to have you as a sister. I'd rather have someone with a strong work ethic and determination. My choice of job has nothing to do with you. I won't judge what you want to do. 
Yeah, but it gets on my nerves. It's frustrating to have a sister who couldn't get into college, can't hold down a job and spends all her time in her room playing games. I mean, literally every time I look in your room, you're playing games. It's like you have no other purpose in life. So what? I enjoy playing games. I cover my expenses and my free time is mine to enjoy. Why don't you mind your own business? No, you don't understand. Your actions affect me too. The neighbors keep asking about you whenever they talk to me. They wonder why they haven't seen you and if you're happy with your work. Sounds like they just love gossiping. You don't have to entertain them. If it bothers you that much, stop talking to them. And the reason they ask such things is that you always have something negative to say about me. Obviously, that becomes the main topic of conversation. Well, it's true. You really are a good for nothing. Think about how it affects mom and dad, having a failed daughter depending on them for so long. They worry about how long this will last. I've told them countless times that I have a job, but they never seem to believe me. Honestly, if you're annoyed by being questioned, then stop spreading rumors. Or you could just get your act together and start making something of your life. Don't put your faults on others. You love blaming everyone else. Maybe you need therapy before everyone starts hating you. No matter what I say, I won't get anywhere with you. I'm not causing you any harm, so back off. You're causing me a lot of harm. You being a shut-in affects the whole family. It's inconsiderate to both mom and dad. Do you want everyone to hate you? Just get your act together and maybe people will like you more. I don't exist to please everyone and make them like me. I pay my bills, right? Yet you still claim I don't have a job. How could I pay my bills without one? Don't act like it's something special. You're an adult. You're supposed to pay your bills. I'll soon finish college and secure a well-paying job in a big corporation. Unlike you, I have goals. Cool. Do whatever you want. Why should I care? It's not like I couldn't have gotten a job like that if I wanted to. Yep, lie as much as you can. A shut-in like you could never get a decent job. Don't pretend you had a choice. You're still at home, right? I hope you're not stealing things while we're away. I don't want any of your stuff around me. I don't need unpleasant reminders. I'm checking to make sure I haven't forgotten anything. I don't want to have to come back here a second time. Okay, fine with me. Please check every corner. We don't want a criminal coming back after we've worked hard to get you to leave. I don't want to see your faces either. I'm checking everywhere possible. And I won't be sharing my new address with any of you. Don't try to find me. Trust me. No one's interested in where you go after you leave. Just how delusional are you? We had enough of you the moment you became a criminal. Mom and Dad only have eyes for me now. They don't waste their attention on you. That's nothing new. You've always been their favorite. I've stopped caring about it long ago. But this time I thought maybe my family would have my back. Even though I knew what kind of people you all are. I hoped just this once. This is the last time you can lash out against us. Mom and Dad have never considered you a good person. They're a bit afraid of what you're capable of. Anyway, you have to leave. We'll be home in two hours, and we don't want to see you there. Give me 15 minutes, and I'll be out of here. Anyway, it's not a big deal for me to leave. The house hasn't felt the same since we remodeled it last year. I'm not that attached to it. Where are you going next? You have no money, so I'm guessing some rundown apartment. Good luck finally striking out on your own. It's about time. But don't come back crying about how much you regret what happened. Hey, sis, it's been a while. How have you been? We're planning to have dinner tonight, and we'd love for you to join us, and we'd absolutely love it if you could join us. It's our treat, of course. Seriously, what's going on? 
Weren't you content when I made it clear that I want nothing to do with you? Now out of the blue, you're messaging me, asking me to join your dinner. It's absurd. Why would I have a change of heart now? Please don't take it so negatively. We are still family, and having dinner together would be a wonderful opportunity to catch up. Mom and Dad are genuinely excited to see you. Can you make an exception this time? You have the audacity to call me family after all the hurtful things that were said. Criminals aren't considered family, remember? I must apologize for that remark. It was wrong of me. I know you were falsely accused and you went to great lengths to find the real culprit. You proved yourself to be incredibly competent, even more than I had ever thought. What else could I have done? You have no idea what it feels like when everyone looks down on you for something you didn't do. I had to clear my name, even if I had to do it on my own. Even if you now believe in my innocence, I can't go back to a family that drove me away in such a manner. So please, just continue staying out of my life. Please don't be so harsh. We are genuinely sorry for everything that happened. You can't make it to dinner tonight? Can't we mend things between us just this once? It's been so long since we had a proper conversation. I'm sorry, but it's not just about tonight. I won't be available tomorrow or the day after either. I need time for myself, and I can't afford to waste any minute on you guys. I need you to respect my decision and never contact me again. Wait, don't go so quickly. Fine, I'll stop bothering you about dinner. But let me tell you why I reached out to you. We're facing some difficulties and we could really use your help. By the way, I've heard some amazing things about your career. How much do you earn? Is it a substantial amount? I had a feeling this was coming. My earnings are personal, and I don't intend to share them with you. If you need money, ask someone else. I heard it from some friends who are huge fans of yours. I can't believe I didn't know it was you all along. I thought you were just at home playing games, but you're actually a famous streamer. That's truly impressive. And now you're suddenly impressed? After all the times you mocked and belittled what I do? I'll admit I made a huge mistake. Having a super famous streamer as a sister is something to be proud of. You're even ranked eight among the top earners, right? Do you know how much those in the top 10 earn? It's incredible. You seem quite enthusiastic about this, but I can't help but wonder about your intentions. I've already cut ties with you. It doesn't matter to you whether I earn a substantial amount or not. Huh? I said I was sorry for what happened in the past. Now that we know the kind of person you truly are, Mom, Dad, and I all sincerely want to bring you back into the family fold. You've earned our respect, and we genuinely want to take care of you. Please consider coming back home. Firstly, I have no desire to return home. Secondly, I was dead serious about severing ties. Leaving home was the best decision I ever made, and I now live in a comfortable high-rise apartment, free from criticism and judgment. Wait, we really need you back. It's an urgent situation. Huh? You need my help now? Weren't you relieved to get rid of me before? The family is facing some serious difficulties, and... I know what's going on. Let's start with the living expenses, which are already a burden. However, the major concern is the huge loan from last year's remodeling. On top of that, there's the loan for the car. And let's not forget your college tuition. Do you expect me to foot all those bills? Your gaming, shut-in, so-called good-for-nothing sister. Oh my god, you didn't think it was worth mentioning when you were thrown out. Mom and Dad thought you'd continue paying. No way! I won't be giving money to people who kicked me out of my own home. Sure, Dad's pay cuts were manageable, and I did contribute a little. But it's not my responsibility. I don't even live there anymore. And it was never my duty to cover your expenses. I'm sorry. We really need your help, sis. We can't pay the bills and they've taken away the car. Can you imagine how difficult it is? That's not good. If you can't afford the car, it's hard to imagine you can keep up with the house payments. I'm guessing you'll end up selling it. And as for your dreams of graduating, 
It looks like they're slipping away. Please, take this seriously. If we lose the house, we'll have nowhere to go. We have no savings left. Please, just help us avoid selling it. I know we were cruel to you, but this is a dire situation. I'm sorry, but I can't assist you with this. It's your house, your problem. You'll have to manage with Dad's earnings. Cut back on unnecessary expenses and try to make ends meet. Dad's money covers my tuition and our living expenses. I started part-time jobs, but it's still not enough. Selling the house seems inevitable. Despite being so close to graduating, I might have to drop out. And that breaks my heart because I've worked incredibly hard to get this far. That's a tough situation. But remember what you said about not wanting to fail like your big sis? Perhaps it's time to reconsider that statement. I'm sorry. Please find it in your heart to forgive me. I don't want to give up on my dreams because of financial constraints. Do you know how hard I've worked? I'm even job hunting now. It's my top priority. You have indeed worked hard up until now. I suppose you'll have to put even more effort into your job and find ways to earn more money. Or perhaps consider moving to a more affordable apartment. You don't necessarily need that fancy house to focus on your studies. No, that's terrible. Besides, selling the house won't solve everything. We'd end up in debt and I can't imagine living a life burdened by constant debt. Well, you reap what you sow. Good luck trying to recover from the financial strain. And just so you know, since you were curious about my earnings, I probably make more in a month than all of you combined can scrape together in a year. So think about that while you toil away every day. You don't have to rub it in. Please, big sis, just this once, help us out. We'll work hard and pay you back, I promise. We're only asking for this one favor. Let me think about it. Nope. What? Even after begging so much? Your family is suffering and you're going to sit back and watch? Okay, let me reconsider. Nope. Even if I were to give you the money, there's no guarantee you'd pay me back. I know your nature well enough to suspect you'd conveniently forget about the debt, considering how much I earn. I know who you are, sis. So my answer remains no. I can't believe you'd say that. We're family, right? How can you think of us this way? That sounds quite familiar. If I recall correctly, I said something similar when you were kicking me out. My words didn't mean much to you then. I have no reason to help any of you. Deal with your troubles yourselves. Oh, come on. I'm so sorry. We shouldn't have treated you that way. Please don't do this. I want to finish school and not let my dreams slip away. After some time, my family continued to pester and demand money from me. But I had no reason to do so. It was their problem, and they needed to figure it out on their own. Unable to bear the situation any longer, I cut off all contact with them and moved to a different apartment that they don't know. My family sank into debt, and they had to sell their house and move into a small, run-down home. But it still wasn't enough for them to make ends meet. My younger sister, unable to afford her education, had to drop out and work at a nearby supermarket. They went from one hardship to another, and it seemed like there was no end in sight. I hope they can overcome their difficulties soon, but of course I won't be helping them. Thank you for watching our video. If you enjoyed this video, please like and hit the subscribe button below. Don't come back home today. Huh? Why? Olivia doesn't want you to. She says she can't study for the test if you're around. Wait, what? I'm not bothering her. Your presence is an obstacle for her. No way. We haven't even talked much recently. That's why she doesn't want you to come home. Then what do you want me to do? It's my own house and I can't come home. You're really selfish, aren't you? What do you mean?
She's about to take the college entrance exam. You don't even understand this because you graduated from high school. The college determines a certain amount of your future, you know. I could understand that. Then you understand, don't you? Could you take responsibility if she fails the exam because of your selfishness? Does that still make you a good parent? What do you mean by selfishness? Is it such a bad thing to just go to my own home? It's your fault she doesn't like you, right? Does she hate me that much? Didn't you know that? Do you remember when you spoke with her last? She hasn't talked with me for a while now. Did I do something wrong? She's a grown woman now. She must have realized how pathetic you are. I'm working at my job properly. I doubt that. I mean, your salary hasn't gone up. You're just a high school graduate. That's all you can get. Olivia doesn't want to grow up to be a pathetic adult like you. In fact, I don't have a degree, but I'm working hard for you and her. Any idiot can try super hard. If the results don't come with it, it would be meaningless. What do you mean by results? I'm making the average salary for my age. You're done for if you try so hard to just be average. My mom friend got a Hermes Birkin the other day, twenty thousand dollars for the bag. Can you afford it? It's not that I can't afford it, but who needs a twenty thousand dollar bag? Everyone has their own sense of value. I'd rather spend the same twenty thousand dollars on Olivia's future. That's the poor man's way of thinking. It's really stressful. I want to buy a bag too. No, what makes you think to say that from this conversation? Even you bought a watch the other day. Yeah, a sixty-eight dollar G-Shock. And that's not all. You bought a big useless car. It's about twenty thousand dollars, right? Ten years ago, I picked a family car to go somewhere as a family. See, you're buying what you want. So I'm buying a Birkin too. No, I'm buying what we need. I need a bag too. You bought a five thousand dollar Chanel bag last year because you said it would last a lifetime. Did I say that? Bags have trends too. No, you're messing up the story. Let's talk about it when I get home. I told you not to come home. Why are you trying to come back so smoothly? You're so sneaky. You can't be serious. It's for Olivia's future. Are you going to ruin her life because of your selfishness? I want her to go where she wants to go too. If you're so worried about her future, don't start talking about twenty thousand dollar bags. Then don't come back. I'll buy you a bag too. Bye. Wait a minute. You're too persistent. Okay. Why don't you just work hard for us? Oh, don't come back until next week because our paste exams are finishing. Don't come back for a while. No, Olivia's exams are over, right? I just got back last week. She said she couldn't concentrate on her studying at all since you came back. What if her grades fail? I don't want that to happen. But as long as I don't go near her room, it won't be any problems, right? She's saying that she can't concentrate just by sensing your presence, and that the whole house smells bad when you're around. Olivia, I can't believe my daughter hates me that much. Yes, she does. So don't come home for a while. How long are we not allowed to come home? Until her exams are over. Huh? Olivia is still in the second year of high school, right? She still has one more year to go. That one year is important. It's the year that will affect your future. I can't spend a year in a hotel or something. We can't afford to waste money like that. We also need to pay for her prep school. You know. You bought an expensive bag, but you don't want me to spend money at all. I gave up on the Birkin and went with the Kelly because you were so annoying. But it's still thirteen thousand dollars. I saved seven thousand dollars, and you're blaming me? I'm so stressed out. I'm gonna buy a Hermes bag. No, seriously, I don't get it. I can't rent an apartment. I don't have a choice but to go home. It takes me two hours to get to work from my parents' place. Then why don't you live in the car? I hear the number of people living in cars is increasing. Huh? You want me to be homeless? You're not homeless because you have a car. Oh, but be sure not to park in the apartment parking lot, though. Go to a station's parking lot or something. 
That's totally homeless. If you feel sorry for me, give me some money. I don't feel sorry for you, so I'm not giving you money. You're not giving me money? I'm the one earning the money. As a housewife, I'm the one keeping Olivia and the house safe. I'm tired of talking to you. I'm going to my parents' home. I'd rather commute two hours to work than be homeless. If you're not coming home, I don't care where you go. All right. You take care of her for me. Olivia doesn't want you to worry about her. You're really gonna make me cry. Hey, stupid. Are you listening to me? Olivia, what's wrong with you all of a sudden? Do you have any idea what you've put mom and me through? My life is ruined because you're a lousy father. Olivia, what are you talking about? Pretend you don't know. So, mom was right. No, I may not be the perfect father, but I've tried hard to do my best for you. What do you mean you've done your best? I can't believe you're leaving me with a woman. You won't give me living expenses or give mom child support. Mom has to work a part-time job, and we're living on a very tight budget. What? What are you talking about? I had to give up my college education because of you. My dream was to become a school teacher. I was told to start working right after high school graduation. What? What? There must be some kind of mistake. What's a mistake? Mom told me not to contact you. But I've had more than enough. It's all wrong. First of all, I didn't leave with a woman. I'm at my parents' house because your mom kicked me out. She kicked you out because you cheated on her, right? Olivia, are you seriously saying that? I was told that I can't come home because you can't concentrate on your studies with me around. When did I say that? Your mother told me that. That's why I haven't been home since your exams. I never said that. I have my own room. There's no way that's true. I said that too, but your mother said you can just feel my presence. What do you mean by presence? I don't get it. I knew it. I thought there was something strange. What about living expenses? Your mother is the one who manages my payroll transfer account. I only withdraw $200 for transportation and pocket money. Only $200? Why are you cutting down so much? I couldn't go to college because of my family. I wanted you to be able to go where you wanted to go. So I've been cutting down as much as I can. Ever since you were a kid, you wanted to be a school teacher. You've always said that, haven't you? What? You remembered. I really wanted to talk to you about it. But you never came back. I thought my dad didn't care about me at all. I haven't heard you call me dad in a long time. You are still my dad, you know. This is no time to get emotional. Why did mom lie to you like that? Hmm, I thought it was wrong, but I believed it was for your sake. No, no, no. You were too easily fooled. How easy are you? You were fooled too. I know, but... Well, if that's the case, I'm going home tomorrow. There's no reason I can't. Wait, don't come home yet. You don't want me to come home? That's not what I meant. I'll find out why she lied to me. No, I'll ask her myself. No, it's a clever trick. She's like a pro. She fooled us all, you know. No, maybe we were just too easy. You might have a point. But do you think if you question her, she'll come clean? Well... There's a good chance that she'll just get pissed off and you'll have to go along with it. Right? Definitely. That's why I should be the one to search her. But that doesn't mean I'm going to let you do that. I have to make things clear. Otherwise, this will bother me. This will make it really hard for me to concentrate on my studies. So just act normal until I say to, okay? Okay, okay. But don't do anything crazy, okay? Also, you're not getting money in that situation, are you? You have an account in your name, right? I can wire you some. Don't worry about it. I have a part-time job. She... She even makes you get a part-time job when you're about to take the entrance exam? I'm really sorry. That's why I told you not to worry about me. But to make up for it, I'll be so selfish when you come home. I still want to go home right now. No! 
I have to settle this. Just give me a minute. Olivia hasn't come home. She hasn't been home for three days. Three days and you finally call me? Because I was desperately looking for her. Why are you so calm? I trusted you to take care of her, right? How can you call yourself her father? How can you call yourself her mother? You kicked me out to have an affair. Our daughter is gone. What are you talking about in this situation? You left Olivia alone and went to a guy's place, right? Well, I guess she got tired of you. Do you? Do you know something? You're the one who took Olivia, aren't you? That's basically kidnapping. I'm calling the police. You're right. Olivia's with me. But it's not a kidnapping. It was her own choice. No way! She hates you. That's because you lied to her. What did you say to Olivia? I just told her how it was. Then, she told me the whole truth. The stories weren't the same. Weird, isn't it? It's because you lied. You're the one who lied. Who said I ran off with a woman? Who said I didn't put enough money to live on? Who said I can't even pay her tuition? Did she say that? That girl, she's a bit of a liar. That's you, isn't it? I would never lie. You and her are. Seriously, you snap back as expected. What? What are you talking about? I wasn't too comfortable with it, but Olivia did some research on you. What? What are you making an 18-year-old girl do? I didn't expect to find this much evidence of an affair. I thought you were just buying bags and spending money. What are you talking about? Sweet conversations and messages between you and the guy, and photos of the two of you together. Dating app uses history. It's a lot. I really regretted finding this out. I should have stopped her. It's not true. It's all a misunderstanding. Oh yeah, it's a part-time job. What kind of part-time job is that? Do you know those videos on YouTube that are all the rage these days with their scuttlebutt stories? I was just sending those messages to make that video. Don't you think it's pretty realistic? What about the photos? Of course, that's for the video too. Don't you get it? I just took a picture like that with someone I know. I see. Which channel's that? Well, it's a secret. That's the way the terms are set up. By the way, you said you had a part-time job and you were always away from home, right? That's what Olivia told me. Yeah, yeah, I'm making a video at that part-time place. What's the name of the company? Why do you need to know that? You're under my dependent on the documents, right? If you're working, I have to go through the paperwork for that. You have a payslip, don't you? Well, no way you can give it to me. I know it's all a lie. If you already know the truth, then that's enough. I was cheating on you. I missed you because you never came home. No, you're the one who didn't let me come home. Have you been lying so much that you don't know which one is reality? It's all true. I'm telling you all the true stories. You and Olivia are liars. Are you out of your mind? Yes, I am. I'm not okay. I'm sick. I can't function. The power of responsibility. So, I'm not responsible. That's a very original way of opening up. You're right. Your lies are pathological. I understand. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I won't lie anymore. I promise you. No, I can't believe you anymore. Let's get a divorce. I can't take it anymore. Divorce is definitely not the way to go. What will happen to Olivia if we get divorced? If her last name changes, she might get bullied at school. Don't worry about that. I'll take care of her. The mother has to take care of the child. That's the way it's supposed to be. Right. After the divorce, I'll ask for child support. $1,500 a month. $3,000 for the both of us. Even if you were to take Olivia, why $1,500 each? It's for Olivia and me. Huh? Since when did you become my child? You are the provider. The wife should be the one who is being provided for. I don't get it. I used to think you were cute, even if you were a little silly. Now, I want to punch my old self in the face. Then I'll put up with just the child support for Olivia. No, she's not going to live with you in the first place. No way! I mean, she has been living with me for three days now. What? The high school is too far away from your parents' house. There's no way she can commute from there. That's why I rented an apartment near her school. 
My office is close by too, so that's great. What the hell are you doing? Give her back to me. I can't live without child support. You only want to take her back for child support. Well, I guess I knew that. I heard you made her get a part-time job when she is getting ready to take the engineering exam. And on top of that, you want her to give up college and get a job because you don't have the money. You're the one playing with men and wearing Hermes and Chanel. Don't be silly. I get it. Then let's start over again. Let's live together as a family. Are you seriously saying that? If I hadn't noticed, you would have kept lying to both of us, and you were going to live while playing, weren't you? I will never forgive you. I can't live on my own. We're a family, aren't we? Forgive me. We're not a family anymore. Your apartment contract expires at the end of this month, so you better start packing your stuff. Also, I already collected the bag and your wallet you bought without my permission. What? Those are all mine. Omg, they're really gone. Give them back, my Hermes. It's perfectly reasonable since you used our savings for our daughter to buy them. I'll sell everything and make sure to charge you for the losses, and compensation money and child support too. Wait, I'm a housewife. I can't pay for that. I can't. You better work hard. I'll ask my lawyer for the rest. How can you decide these things without even discussing it? You're terrible. Just listen to me for once. Hey. Are you listening? Why are you leaving me on red? After that, she sent many persistent messages, but I ignored her and blocked her. I immediately consulted a lawyer that I knew. I decided to have them proceed with the divorce. Maria was an idiot beyond my imagination. In the end, my parents-in-law got in between us, and we finally got a divorce. Currently, Maria is being taken back to her parents' home and is being fully controlled. She seems to work day and night. Meanwhile, Olivia and I continued to live happily together. A year later, Olivia was accepted to the college of her choice. As a parent, I will do my best to support my daughter as she pursues her dreams.